I survived a suicide attempt. On Thursday 22nd of May 2017, I made a suicide attempt from a build-up of emotional stress, dating four years back to when I was just 15 years of age. Let's rewind and tell the story to how I ended up on the train tracks on this day. Taking it back to school, I was picked on a little bit. I was called fat, slag, ugly, stupid, weird, strange and the list goes on by those who thought that they owned the school. I couldn't deal with these name-calling buddies that I isolated myself out. I didn't tell the teachers. I didn't tell my family. I didn't tell my friends. Just the age of 15 I discovered I was gay. It was so confusing and scary to admit to myself that I like girls. I always thought I was immature and couldn't understand why I didn't see boys like my friends did. I kept my sexuality a secret from my friends, from my family, and I just didn't want anybody to find out in fear they'll hate me like the bullies. I took up self-harm to deal with the stress. After all, I was stressed enough in my GCSEs. Self-harm allowed me to cope with exam stress and sexuality issues. I ended up sleeping with a boy when I was just 15 years of age. And I didn't want it. I wanted to scream I was gay. I wanted to say, no, I don't want this. But instead I lay there and let him do his job. I let him use me for his own sexual pleasure while I broke even more inside. Now having to deal with exam stress, sexuality issues, and regret for losing my virginity to someone who didn't deserve me. I left school and surprisingly I passed all my exams. So I began a sports course at college. By this time, exam stress was lifted because I'd finished them, but I still faced problems with accepting myself. Sport helped me come through it. I could run away my problems with a good long run and feel better, but I began running too much to a point where I injured my knee. As punishment, I continued to self-harm, but this time decided I would skip meals because I felt fat for not being able to run. Added stress came with coursework, college work stress, injury stress, sexuality issues, and more self-harm. I was saved for a short while. My college tutor, who I also knew from athletics, helped me overcome my injury inside college and got me back to athletics to train again. I decided it was my confidence making me feel this low and my sexuality. I told him I was going to do performing arts to gain confidence. He agreed, gave me advice and said I was always welcome back to sports in the future and he'd see me at athletics. I eventually started eating again because I built a trust up with food again, but this time I was always controlling what I ate so in a way calorie counting but wasn't I controlled I made sure everything I ate was healthy I would refuse to eat McDonald's and everything so off I went to study performing arts at college for my first year my confidence grew I pushed my sexuality to the side and I slept with a few more boys to make me straight this added stress to me as I didn't enjoy being with them I made me start abusing myself more with razors for being different disgusting and weird why couldn't I just enjoy being with a boy instead of thinking about girls 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 Till the day came where I didn't give permission to sleep with someone. I finally said no, but this boy did it to me anyway. It angered me for not telling the boy, I'm saying no because I'm gay, why won't you accept no? It took me until I was 18 to sleep with another boy, but this time the lights were off and I was in control. Only this time it felt good with a boy, but that's because I only imagined him as a girl. I had to stop because I felt disgusting and stopped being with the boys and admitted I'm gay and there's nothing I can do to change that. By this time, I built a trust with eating junk food again. I began to eat my McDonald's and stuff again, but not as regularly as other normal kids would, in my head. After finishing my first year on performing arts, I decided that I wanted to go back to do sports, but didn't like the group and I couldn't settle because I hated myself so much, and I thought that other people hated me, but that was just my anxiety kicking in. So I went back to performing arts, only this time I found it harder because I still hated the fact I was gay. I wanted to be someone else so badly. The college work got too much for me, and again I was stressing and dealing with it by hacking at my skin, cutting it open and bleeding to feel relieved. That's when October 2016 came. My 16 year old brother got beat really bad. He had a black eye and his face was badly. That caused more stress and trauma to me. I blamed myself even though I had no control over it. I isolated myself and carried on self-harming, angry that no one had noticed I'd been self-harming for years now angry that I was almost 19 and no one could see how unhappy I was and how much I wanted to die. I wanted to murder the boy that beat my brother up and how I didn't I'll never know. December 2016 we went away for Christmas, my birthday and New Year to forget about October but we had more trauma added when my 10 year old brother fell ill. January 2017 my little brother was admitted to hospital as soon as we got back to the UK. 
He was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and I couldn't deal with my little brother having this life-threatening disease, having to rely on injections to keep him alive. I continued with my self-harm. Then came the news. My old sports tutor and athletics coach passed away. More trauma added that I couldn't control. Couldn't deal with it all. I continued to self-harm, making my skin badly. I finally went back to college after weeks off and was behind. Struggled with the work but was too stubborn to ask for help. I made it through the stress with my self-harm, overrunning again and controlling everything I ate. I did get through college and finished with a merit overall in April. By the end of April, my mum found that I'd been self-harming. She caught me when I was trying to heal my scars. That's when she decided that she was going to take me to the doctors. I went to the doctors and they diagnosed me finally with depression and anxiety after me telling the long story of how I've been bullied, how I've been struggling to cope with my brother being beat, my brother getting ill, and struggling to cope with losing my athletics coach. And also not really telling, I couldn't, I couldn't tell my mum then, there and then that I was gay and that's what was making me self-harm and depressed so much because I couldn't be myself. I couldn't deal with me. I just couldn't. I was given fluoxetine medication and benzocilin tablets for my skin. I was told that the side effects can sometimes increase the thoughts of suicides and to tell someone if they do in case but I bottled it up when the thoughts began to increase. So Thursday the 22nd of May, 2017, I made a suicide attempt. I went to athletics training like I do every Thursday at half six until half seven, and that's what tipped me over the edge. I was clinging to athletics. It was the only thing my mental health wasn't taking from me. I was still interested in and still loved running. I wasn't going to let it destroy my love for running. This particular occasion, we did an 800 metre time trial, my favourite event, but it happened to, I happened to overthink into my thoughts too much and before I knew it I was having a panic attack at the side of the track. That was it. I wanted to die. I, wanted to li I didn't want to live if athletics was gone with my mental health. It had finally taken away that thing that was keeping me alive. After training I said goodbye to all my friends and walked back to my granddad, so angry that no one knew I was gay, but even more angry that I hated myself and I'm better off dead and s hated myself for feeling so scared about telling people I'm gay. I told my granddad to go fuck himself. He won't understand and I'm going to drive myself into a wall. I got into my car and I drove around in a state where I didn't know what I was doing and I was incapable of driving. At 8.38pm I found myself on a train line having already tried ringing my mum to say goodbye and ringing my brother as they both didn't pick up their phones I felt ignored and couldn't deal with it. My granddad had been in touch with them and told them what I'd said and my dad rang me. As I spoke with my dad on the phone at the side of the train time, he knew where I was. We had walked the dog there a few times. He knew I was near a train line. I got onto the train line and stood there looking down at the track, closed my eyes. Then I remember being grabbed. My dad dragged me off the train lines and locked me in a car and took me home. I ended up cutting again, breaking down in the house. I don't remember much, but the next thing I know I was in A&E where I spoke to Sam who worked on the mental health team. She wanted to know if I'd taken anything because my eyes were so dilated, it looked like I was on drugs. She gained my trust and we began to talk. On the 23rd of May, 2017, at one o'clock in the morning, I came out to Sam, the first person I'd ever physically uttered them words to. I'm gay and I'm scared. I want to die because I'm disgusting and can't deal with my sexuality. I want to die. I'm gay and it's not normal to be gay and Sam put her arms around me and helped me so much that night the next bravest thing I did was invite my parents back into the room and tell them that I'm gay although I couldn't do it so I let Sam do it for me and they accepted me I was allowed home at three o'clock in the morning because the crisis team was going to make a home visit to me that day I remember leaving A&E and getting into the car and my mum cradled me in the car, hugging me so tight, happy that I was still alive. 
and she told me I'll never be disappointed in you. I remember falling to sleep and getting home and going back to bed and this was the start to my recovery and today I'm happy to be alive because I can now say I am a suicide attempt survivor. If I had succeeded that night my family wouldn't know I'm gay, my friends wouldn't know I'm gay. They'd all be left with the confusion of why I did it and all they would have known was a fake. I'm happy to stand here today knowing I'm being me and everyone loves me for me. Life does get better even when you get to rock bottom. It will get better if you get to help. I'm thankful to Sam and the crisis team for helping me that night and I'm thankful for having parents that accept me for who I am and friends that accept me for who I am. I am a suicide attempt survivor.